This is lesson 12, economic sections for the strength of materials class. So we have now taken up the flexure formula, which is the stress due to bending is equal to Y M, where the moment times Y over I, where Y is the distance from the point of interest to the neutral axis. So for a rectangular beam, the neutral axis is at the center and if this is the point of interest, then this, this distance is y, or the distance from the neutral axis, as I have said. Now, uh, if, if we look at this formula for the flexural stress and plot all the stresses from the top fiber of the beam to the bottom fiber of the beam in such a way that the stresses are in the x-axis and we can actually create a diagram which which is something like this okay it, the the diagram is compression on the right side and tension on the left side and as you can see the maximum compression stress occurs Okay, this is the maximum compression stress, maximum stress. It actually occurs at the outermost fiber away from the neutral axis and also the maximum tension, tension stress. So let's label it as maximum tension stress and maximum compression stress. These stresses occur at the outermost uh, fibers of our beam and hence that's why we have this other formula the maximum bending stress okay the maximum bending stress is equal to the maximum moment times c over i where of course m is the maximum or minimum moment that's why we input here an absolute value it can be a positive or negative mo bending moment and C is the distance of the outermost fiber from the neutral axis. So for this beam, it can be the topmost fiber or since, because, since it's symmetrical, the rectangular beam is symmetrical, C can also be the distance to the bottommost fiber. And now we have this realization that if, if you look at this diagram, the maximum stresses only occur at these two regions. It means that the, the fibers in these two shaded areas of the beam are the most used areas of the beam. In terms of stresses, they are the most stressed. So if only we can el eliminate the area of the beam, that is not that stressed, we can save a lot of materials. So, from the rectangular beam, we can actually do that and, and let's say we will, we will only uh, use the part of the beam that is most stressed. So, that will be the top and the bottom strips of the beam. Okay? So, this is now our uh, tentative economic beam and of course this cannot happen this is impractical in real life because they are disconnected and that's why we have here one of the most famous steel shapes steel section shapes uh, we call it the wide flange it's it's two strips of the beam connected by by a small strip of steel so they are connected so okay we, we call this part the flange and this part is the web so this formula the flexure formula and the analysis of the stresses is oh, actually the reason why we have this structural shape the wide flange or the w shape also known as the wide flange and because we have removed these areas which are areas that are not that stressed 
we say that it's actually an economic shape. This is an economic shape. 